So it would be four turns or you basically it basically gives you it, it happens immediately at the end of your turn if you increase zero to one. Right. Because normally you would take one full turn, but it means moving zero to one on another planet. The problem is, I guess, here we go on a subsequent increase tech level attempt on a different planet. So you don't accident. So you don't just like we reduce it to zero. We bring it up to one. We reduce it to zero. We bring it up to one. You don't just cycle because that that would make this a broken loop. Right. So let's not let's not do that. Um, but this has to be a different subsequent uh, immediate subsequent attempt on a different planet than this one. OK. Yeah, that feels good. OK. So again, got to check the math on that. Um, I guess this is something else. Look for exploits, right? Find ways to break this. Do you get diminishing returns for pillaging the same world over and over? I mean, eventually it becomes tech level zero and you can't pillage it. I think that's it. Eventually you just zero out a planet and it's got nothing left to give you. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this one, I want to cut this and I want to put it further down. Right. Under all this. So give me one second. Insert one below. Alter system location. Discover system. Right. These, these things. These will come later. Okay. All right. So... Surely the tech level should determine the value of the reward. I mean, it does. Right here, right there. This is just, that's it. This is one. Yeah. Keep pillaging. Zero to one will cost you a fat cred. No, no, but that's fine. I just, it, I just don't want it to be like free experience every other turn. That's the thing. That's the loop is you pay the fat creds. You beat the shit out of a planet. You bring it from one to zero. Right. Then on the next turn, you immediately bring it back to one. You get two experience. Then you pillage it again back to zero. Then you spend another fat cred. You bring it back up. Right. So it's this constant. I don't want that. Yeah. So that's the that's the thing here that I'm trying to I'm trying to avoid. But we'll we'll look. That's why the different planet is there. Right. Uh, OK. All right. So let's let's remove this row and keep we'll keep digging in. So. Alter biosphere, alter atmosphere, and alter temper, uh, temperature. These are all the same. I want these to be exactly the same for all of them um, and to require have the, the same stuff. So you got to own uh, you got to own a terraformer asset on the planet to be terraformed. You have to take. Uh, no, that's the task right now. The prerequisite. So what else? You need to have a base of influence. On the target planet. What's that saying? I heard you say something like wisdom, intelligence, tomatoes and fruit. The thing is, uh, it's intelligence is knowing that a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is not putting it in a fruit salad. So there you go. So, OK, you need a base of influence. You need to own a terraformer asset. Doesn't matter if you are. I don't think you need influence because as we saw, Triangulum and uh, and Crux, they terraformed they terraformed an enemy planet. So maybe the terraformer asset, let's call it something different because terraformer is boring. A terraforming seed. I like that. I want offensive terraforming to be a thing. A tomato based fruit salad is a salsa. Just as an aside, it's a salsa. Uh, the asset, I think the asset blows itself up. Yeah, does it require planetary permission? If you don't have permission, you have to pay. The asset itself will have that tag. So I guess, let me let me make a note here. So to do, beyond testing, uh, create the terraformer, terraforming seed asset, and then also create chaos table, right? So that's what I need. Um, how can it be used defensively if they need a BOI? There's BOIs everywhere, so... That's fine. You can brute force a BOI. Yeah, totally. Um, okay. So, so far influence is only used for one goal. I know. That's, again, that's by design. And actually it's used for two. Tech level and, and planetary nature. Okay. All right. So you need to own a base of influence. You need to own the terraforming seed. I think it takes, each one of these takes time. Um, so let's say it takes... I don't know, three and then maintain. Okay. Well, that's, I guess that's part of the task because the asset itself takes three turns to activate or something like that. Yeah. 
Um, okay, so let's say the task is activate the, uh, take the asset, activate asset ability action, right? So you gotta do that first. Activate the terraforming seed asset. Um, and then what does it do when it activates? Like how can, can you can, you can stop the terraformer. Yeah. And then it just, it goes on in the background. Uh, so, uh, the seed requires three turns. You got to keep it alive, right? It it starts a countdown. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Activate that. So let's, you know what? Let's do, let's do that. Give me, give me a second. So what I'm going to do here is I just, I realize I don't have the uh, faction turn spreadsheet open. Okay. So what I'm thinking is I want to grab, let's just grab an asset, right? So terraforming seed. Okay, so we don't need this row. I guess I could just do that. You know what? Let's just do it as a text block because that's easier. Is the terraforming seed itself attackable or does it? Now I think I feel like you need to clear the stack. We'll we'll see. I got to go. I got to go one thing. One thing at a time. Okay, so the asset is we need to know. Uh, let's see. Cost. WCF and it's special, right? So cost. WCF, um, like what kind of asset it is, uh, HP and max HP, right? So starting, starting HP, it's a kind of special BOI, I think, but we'll, we'll get there. You can't make it tougher. I don't think you have to protect it. Uh, type attack counter counter and then notes upkeep and that's enough okay notes upkeep okay so i don't know about cost uh it is special i don't know how much hp it should have probably not much like one or something um type also special attack none counter none definitely it's 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 a glass cannon right uh, definitely has the P tag. Yeah, notes it has planetary government required. Yep, which is what P I think on the notes thing. So S S A and P <laughs> probably. Yeah. Okay. And then upkeep. I think it whoop, upkeep. It costs. It costs money. It's glass, not a cannon. I mean, the cannon is it goes off and it fucks your planet. Um, okay, cool. So this is this is the start of the thing, and then how does it work? So like, uh, once activated, the seed begins a three turn countdown, marking progress at the end of each faction turn in which it survives at the end of the third turn the asset is destroyed and the uh, adjustment is made to the target planet okay so I want there to be a chance for it to fuck up too. So like a one in 10 or like a one in, I don't know like, I don't know what the number is, but the idea is that there is, there is a small chance it'll malfunction. Uh, when this occurs, uh, roll D10 on a one. And again, these are, these are going to be like D10, D12, D20, whatever. We don't know. Uh, on a one roll on the, terraforming mishaps table right okay 
it's a different table, right? Because the chaos table, this is this is something else. This is for like personal. I want terraforming to be a separate table, right? Different tables for different themes, right? And so yeah, the transforming the terraforming seed eventually expends its its use and opens up and it does the thing. And the thing is happening over the course of this this time. And at the end, uh, this this happens, and then we get blue trees like on Almori, right? Um, if terraforming was very rare and seemingly the last terraformer is used. We'll get there, right? Like, it's going to be expensive. Very expensive. Uh, TL5 requires a high stat requirement, right? Like, these are very hard to make. To the point where I'm not sure we can represent this by just saying no one can make them right now. So I can just make them like you have to have cunning eight. Right? Which means Triangulum can't make them yet. They'll eventually have to. Yeah, I think that's probably the best. That's probably the best way to do it, right? Require TL8. Uh, TL5 requires eight cunning. Plus an XP cost to buy. There you go. So like very expensive plus one XP to buy. I think that's I think that's the I think that's the plan. Yeah, well, and this is the thing is if you can't get there, right? If you're like, oh, only Triangulum's ever going to be able to make these. Well, there you go. So buy them from Triangulum because it doesn't cost you XP and creds to have on your own. It doesn't require TL5 to own one or 8 Cunning to own one. Buy them from House Triangulum. Buy them from the Trillion Ring, right? So I want this to be very difficult. And this is the gate for it, is the asset. Once someone gives you the seed, anybody can use it. It... it Cunning too, you just take it to a planet and you're like, Bloop. make it wealth instead. Yeah, I mean, sure, right? I don't know. It doesn't feel like wealth to me, but maybe it is. Um, but in this case, yeah, it'll require cunning is explicitly information and tech, right? Yeah, and we use the Imperial Terraformers and lost that ability. Yeah. It'll require Rata that it doesn't. Yeah, and that's part of its special notes, right? So any faction can own a terraforming seed. It has no inherent requirements to own and operate beyond the upkeep cost. Yeah, so Eridanus already owns, has high wealth, but they don't have tech level five, right? Eridanus controls a TL4 planet, but you have to, this is the thing, someone will have to give them a TL5 planet so they have the infrastructure to make the the seed, right? Oh, they do? What what planet? Oh, they have a base of influence on Lovelace. That's right. So I guess if Triangulum wants to corner the market on terraforming seeds, they have to boot Eridanus off of their TL5 planet. Uh, also, you can't use pre-tech researchers to build these. I think that's the other thing, right? Um, pre-tech researchers cannot produce terraforming seeds something like that we'll we'll figure it out right and then this i can put a comment cunning the point is that once you can make one yeah you could theoretically sell them to other people um yes and when destroyed other things happen yeah um yeah or maybe just any eight well, that makes uh yeah sure you know what I think that makes sense. As long as you have N8 and a TL5 planet, I think that's kind of good. Yeah. Because then you could make a bomb terraformer or you could make a science terraformer or whatever. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Uh, doesn't the P tag prevent making that asset without permission? Sure. And landing it. But you got to pay for it, right? Yeah. Okay. I think this is fine. This is fine for a base level terraforming seed asset. Um, so I'm going to take that out of the to do. And I'll say balance the terraforming seed asset new asset terraforming seed there we go okay yeah and you can force permission with like popular movement and all that stuff yeah and it, it's like a bomb right where you could use it to attack an enemy planet you can use it to improve your own planet that kind of thing yeah and then you can flavor it however you want once you've once you've done it right it's your it's your story to tell uh, i just give you the base material Okay, all right, so you own a terraforming planet, you take the ad activate asset ability, activate the terraforming seed asset, uh, and that's it, right? Like, it just needs to do its own thing, 
right? Uh, let the asset, protect the asset until it is done. Until it is finished. All right. So, I think the danger is um, enemy interference, right? Um, there's no succeed or fail chance. Uh, I guess potential unexpected side effects as per the terraforming mishaps table. No, this is the use asset ability, whatever whatever that one's called, that normal ability. Um, so there's a chance that it'll have a side effect. Um, and then, yeah, if the asset is destroyed before it completes its work, roll on the terraforming mishaps table with a plus, uh, plus X, where X is the number of turns one to three it has been active i guess it's zero to three if you bust it on the same if you somehow manage to get a intelligence fait accompli and you know they're going to activate the seed this turn and you bust it before it does its normal thing then you're you're good to go but let's be real hitting a terraforming seed once it starts is going to take a lot of concerted effort right you really need to go in on it i wonder I don't think they can be stealthed. I think that's another thing we need to add to that asset, right? Uh, stealth cannot be applied to a terraforming seed. It's too big. It's like a facility, right? Um, yeah, they'd be huge, like factories you install in the poles. Uh, yes, one of the one of the tags, uh, Big Al. One of the tags is the planet gets a uh, terraforming failure. As their tag. Yeah. Even for secretive? Yes. Absolutely. Can you change their allegiance with saboteurs? Sure. Yeah, maybe you can steal them. That makes sense. It'd be fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? They might be a modular space station. They might be like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Would terraformers help with changing TL? No. No, no. Uh, okay. All right. So, let's... Um, let's see. There was another thing I wanted to do real quick for this. Uh, the bonus. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, on the table, and this will be a note for me, terraforming mishaps. Uh, worse results lower down. Uh, best result is nothing happens, right? Then just flavor stuff. Then mechanical stuff. Along other vectors. Uh... Never, nothing happens. Uh, never failure. Never total failure on the table. Um, but lots of potential for chaos and confusion. Okay, so that's just kind of generally a, a thing. So we'll we'll come back to that. Yeah, I like this idea of the terraformer asset, right? I have another idea for. There, we're gonna add another asset in a minute. We'll see. You'll 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 understand. So okay, I think that's probably good for this. The reward is. Move the uh, move the appropriate adjustment. Uh, move the appropriate adjustment meter up or down one level. Right, we talked about this before. Where God, where is it? Hang on, let me um, let me look at the. I think it's under influence. Yeah, here we go. So it's like um, we had them listed in terms of like most livable. To least livable. How can the terraformer move? I don't know. You have to move it. Move with assets. Okay. Well, let's here. Let's reproduce it uh, under uh, under goals here. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, here. Something else here as a note for myself. Something especially dangerous and cool. If you use this on a planet with, what is it called? Uh, hidden Doom? Let me see. Where's, where's, where's my little serpent's planet here? It's called Doomed World. Yeah. 
or Sealed Menace. Doomed World or Sealed Menace. I'll figure that out later. But yeah, it's especially dangerous to terraform those kinds of planets because you might kill the planet and you might awaken the menace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, las gun explosions. Etc. Uh okay. All right. So, let's uh let's keep going. Let's let's work away at these. So, move the adjustment meter up or down one level. Um I feel like I wrote these all out somewhere and I don't know where I don't know where those notes ended up. I I feel like they were maybe in goals. Let me look. Words. Ah, scales. Here we go. I knew we had this somewhere. Okay. So, there you go. Okay. So, if your planet if your planet is invasive, you can move it up to thick. You can move it down to invasive corrosive, right? With one action. Now, I want there to be a thing where you can spend to do one more, right? Where it's a freebie just for doing it. Uh, then spend either, I don't know, five, spend either like two XP or 10 fat creds. I don't know. I'm going to just put some experience or some fat creds to move uh, the meter one more time. And then I don't know, like maybe, maybe a third one, right? Like, cause they're pretty, they're pretty big meters. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, let me put a like a chaos roll. Yeah, exactly. Then risk. Um then optionally. And then this thing and then again. Then optionally, you can roll a d10 uh versus what do you think? There's like a 50-50 chance? Like a TN? Ruling just a D10, it'd be like TN of six? On a success, uh, advance, move the meter again. On a failure, roll on the terraforming mishaps table with a bonus equal to the amount you failed this roll by. Yeah, there you go. Since you can buy terraformers with force, it's also not buildable with pre-tech logistics as it functions like pre-tech law. Yes, yeah, exactly, yeah. So let me, let me just, I mean, I'll make a note, but that is also true uh, of that particular asset. So, um, pre-tech from terraforming seeds, nor can pre-tech logistics. Stealth cannot be applied to a terraforming seed. Yay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Perfect. Uh, and then do you earn experience for doing this? Yeah, totally. Uh, I think it's like gain two XP or whatever, right? Like an amount, just a little like bonus for doing it. I want basically all of these to give you XP aside from creating new tags because there's no danger involved in those but if there's danger you should get xp for doing the thing or at least have the choice to gain xp all right so that's fine as a basis for these ones i i'm i'm happy with that as an alpha or pre-alpha kind of like stage all right let's give this a little more room to breathe there we go okay cool All right. I think it makes more sense instead of stacking all these limits on terraformer seeds to make a goal to build a terraformer seed. Nah, I mean that's that's adding complexity on complexity. I want to use the systems that I have. It's a good it's a good point if this proves to be too janky, moving some of those rules between those two blocks. Uh, I think makes sense, but for right now let's leave it here and then I'll I'll get some some feedback. We'll play test it a little uh on at a glance. 
Uh, okay, all right. So this this ability is called diaspora. So we move this this goal. The diaspora goal is moving population from one world to another, getting all your serfs, getting all your people, putting them on a, a transit thing and moving them from one planet to another. So I think in this case, we have another stand in asset. Oh, this is this is going to be fun. If you want to be a nihilist and you want to drive this planet into or drive this system into the ground, you're going to blow these up. These are going to be targets for pirates, for villains, for bad guys. The idea is that you build a colony ship and you send people away and then somebody else shoots it and they might blow it up and kill all your people. Uh, it's not it's not great if that happens to you, but I want it to be possible. Uh, so, OK, let's see. Yeah, are there more powerful forms? I don't know. We'll have to figure that out. But basically, the prerequisite is uh, you need a base of influence on the origin planet and the target planet. You need 75% influence on the origin planet. And then you have to, I think that's it, right? Uh, I think those are the prerequisites. You just have to have, you just got to have like, we have these people, we have influence over them. We can put them on the spaceship and then they can, and they can go. Um, and then uh, how do they move? The asset can move itself. The origin planet is tech level zero. Then, then I don't know. It's not worth anything. Um, so there's no one to move. Right. I guess tech level zero. Can, can you get into a situation where. I mean, if it's tech level zero, I guess anybody qualifies because 75 percent of like one can't just steal people. No, no, absolutely not. No tech level zero worlds can hold people. Yeah. So let's look at Bora. Right. Bora's tech level zero. Where the fuck is Bora? Uh, Thor Hill. Bora. There it is. PCVI is point four. Oh, it's Bora's tech level one. Yeah. Let's look at Gats. Yeah, right. PCVI is zero on Gats because there's there's really no way to gain influence there. Uh, is Man also tech level zero? Yeah, but it'll there'll be you know what there'll be a non-zero number. So I think that I think that makes sense. Yeah, Gats has no people on it. So yeah, I think I think that's fine. Down south, there's a TL zero with billions. Yeah, but but the point is is that all we need to check here is that you can have you can have influence. That's all we need to worry about. Okay. All right. So you have influence on the origin planet. You take those people, you tell them to get on a spaceship and you get the fuck out of here. Uh so the task is purchase a colony ship asset. I don't know if I want it to be mm, I guess it's an asset, but the problem is I don't want it to just be like a sp a spaceship. You can you can. Mm. I want it to be a thing you can attack, so I guess it has to be an asset. I guess that's the best way to do it. Let's let's do it that way for now, and then we'll we'll go from there. Uh. Uh, so let's see here. New asset. Colony ship. Okay. All right. So a colony ship. I'm not sure how much it costs. Um, it is special because I want anyone to be able to build it. It requires tech level four, but like anybody should be able to do that. I don't know about what the HP should be. I kind of like the idea of scaling it, but we'll, we'll get to that, right? Okay. So upkeep is zero. It doesn't have a special ability, but it is like special in its itself. Yeah. So colony fleet. Or colony ships. Nah, I just think like, call, let's call it colony transport. Because then it might be a bunch of ships. It might be one. Who knows? Okay. Um, 
I think it should have a counterattack, but no attack. So like, I don't know, 2d4, something like that. Has to be able to move at least three hexes. Why? I want it to be, like, if it's slow, you do one, 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 and then drop it off. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll, we'll deal with this in a second. I need, like, a, a weak counter, but not a useless one. So can it kind of fight back? So maybe a d6? Again, we'll have to balance that. Can it stop in empty hexes? No. There are some places you can't get with a two hex move. You'll have to find another way to get those people there. Yeah, I don't want it to be... I, we'll have to figure out how far it can go, but yeah, if you can't reach certain systems, that's just how it is. Like, I'm okay with that. The ship itself isn't that good at transporting. The ship is a box full of people. It's not like an awesome spaceship that can go anywhere. It kind of sucks. So you you will probably need a T-Web or shipping combine or something else to move it. This is just the box to put a person in. Yeah. Yeah, so let's maybe not, it's not, that's why it's not a ship. I'm not making it a starship. Yeah, it's a box. <laughs> so stop thinking of it as a being able to necessarily move itself. I think it'll have its own base move. Yeah, type like it's a facility maybe or something. Yeah, or something like that. So, um, okay, so uh, when this asset is purchased... Reduce the amount, reduce the population of the world, or I guess planet, it's built on. Uh, reduce population of planet it's built on by one step. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's like a big cryo sleep module or something. Yeah, colony, colony, let's call it colony module. I like that. People mover, right? So when this asset is purchased, reduce the population of the planet it's built on by one step. Um, this asset can be moved by any ability or asset that is capable of moving other assets. Mm-hmm. I think that's the thing. So no matter what it is, it's very easy to move. They're designed to be cargo containers for people. You can move them around. Uh, okay. Let's see. Can be moved by any asset or ability. Please reduce the population it's activated on. That's what this is. It's it, it's right here. <laughs> when this asset is purchased, reduce the population of the planet's built on by one step. Yeah. That's how it that's how it works. So okay. This asset can be moved by any by any asset. Uh reduce population is built on by one step. Um if this asset is destroyed, um the population it contains is gone forever. Dead, toast, finished. If it's TL4, you can't create it on TL2 planets. I guess we need to change, change to activated. So let's go. How about this? You make it somewhere. Ah, there's active and inactive. There you go. Okay. So here's what we do. So we go like this. Uh, as a as an action, this module, this asset, reduces the population of a world. Yes. Oh, yeah. You could steal them. Totally. Yeah. Um, reduce the population of a planet, the planet it is on by one step, uh, so long as the prerequisite, as long as the activator has a 75% majority influence, uh, on that planet. So this way you can build it, move it somewhere, fill it up, move it again, and dump it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. If this asset is destroyed, the population it contains is gone forever. Uh, 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 yeah, convince all these people to get into your unmarked white space fans. Uh, okay. Uh, if a... I guess the other thing we need to make a note here, this asset has one of two states. Empty and full. Uh, if the asset is empty, if the asset is, uh, and I guess that's, that indicates certain things about it. Okay. As an action, 
This asset reduces the population by one step as long as the activator is majority on the planet. The asset becomes full. If it is already full, it cannot be activated. Okay, there you go. And then uh, this asset can be moved by any asset or ability that's capable of moving other assets. Um, right? So you can target it yourself. Does the goal just spawn the asset? Maybe. Yeah, maybe, Jorgen. That might be a good thing. So it would be like, buy it. So, yeah, let me, we'll, we'll look at this. So I kind of like the buy it first, then move it, then do something with it thing. But, uh, okay, if this asset is destroyed and it is full, the population it contains is gone forever. If it is empty, nothing happens, right? It's just an asset. Yeah, okay. You can literally steal people's serfs with treachery and hostile takeover. Yeah, totally. So I want it to take long enough that you could theoretically go after it and steal people's serfs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. If this asset is destroyed and it's full, the population is gone forever. Okay. Um. So that means then take the take the buy asset ability and purchase a colony. Um, what do we call a colony module? And then subsequently take the activate asset ability or use asset ability action to fill the module. Uh, move the module to a new planet. And then, do we think it takes, do you have to take an action to unload? Because this is like one, two, three, it'd be like four turns. As an action, you can deactivate it, dump the population. That's kind of what I was thinking. And then, no, oh, here you go. Unloading it isn't an action. Take the diaspora goal action. Uh, destroy the colony module. Asset and increase the population of the target planet by one step. Yeah, there we go. Cool. All right. So I think then the other thing we need to note here, um, this asset ability can only activate on planets whose population is what do we call it uh let's go back to goals one uh let's see outpost or larger uh, that's under goals two okay outpost or larger because then you can't you can't use it on a yeah you can you can't use it on a planet with no people on it Cool. So then you take the diaspora goal action, you dump a bunch of people down, they take apart the, the thing, and you build it. So you can take an outpost, increase millions to billions? Yes, because again, if I had my druthers, if I was redesigning this, I wouldn't rename all of these, right? I would call this uh, abandoned planet, right? No population, and then small, medium, large, right? I would change the values because I don't, I don't like the millions, billions. I don't like them as numbers. I just like them as relative to the universe at large. Because then we have a little bit more like ability to, to fuck with this stuff. Now, we did a little bit of weird math here. Very large could be assembled from five outposts. I think that's fine. I think we just use this scale. I don't think we do too much like exponential like stuff. Yeah, as part of this update, I might just change all the labels. We might just do that as part of the rollout. Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, so, uh, cool. I think that's it for increasing your population. Increasing and decreasing as the same action. It's, it's one thing in the goals matrix, right? Diaspora. Move population from one planet to another. Uh, the danger is uh, vulnerable colony modules... Uh, loss of population, um, potential damage, destruction, and theft. 
Ooh. Oh, I think this is cool. Check this out. So, if this asset is destroyed, the population of Canadians is gone forever, and the faction in control of the asset at the time of its destruction suffers 1d10 plus 3 faction HP damage. Right? Because it represents the people of your faction being like, how did you let this happen? Like, what are you, what are you doing? This is insane, right? So they, they damage your internal uh, uh, solidity because you let this occur. This is a big deal losing these people. Yeah. If you steal it, then it gets blown up. Well, tough shit. It's yours. Uh, remember, you can't take a hit to influence. Influence is not a number. It's a byproduct. This is becoming a meme immediately following the you can't move planets meme. Will I redo behind enemy lines? I already said June at the beginning of the stream. Yes. At the end, we'll make sure that we cover existing ones that we that we want. Yeah. Lowering HP lowers your influence potentially anyway. So if you hostile take over a full module, is it empty or full? It's full. It stays full. Yeah. 1d10 would kill some factions. What? What? No. Look at, look, no, nobody here has less than 10 hit points. House Lyra shouldn't be doing this right now, but no, a D10 is, for the big factions, nothing. For the small factions, it's a big deal, but like, yeah, no, a D10 is a total, D10 plus 3 is a totally reasonable amount of damage. And Lyra should not undertake this task at this low health. It's just not smart. Reticulum would be pretty close to getting killed if they tried this. And failed at the worst possible way, but but this is this is fine. Yeah, exactly. That's their choice, right? Potential damage, destruction, and theft. Uh, potential faction HP damage. Okay, and then reward, gain two XP, and then population restructuring. Actually, maybe this should be more. Maybe this should be like six XP. Right, if if a SpaceX Mars mission rocket suddenly exploded with like a million people on it, yeah, you'd think that'd be a big deal, right? We would have we would have massive internal uh, restructuring. People would lots of people would lose their jobs. There would be a new president. Like the whole fucking thing would just would shift around that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, population restructuring is the benefit, and that's how that goes. Oh, and then subsequently. Though, uh, like, related, uh, though, subsequently, though related, uh, the um, loss, uh, gain in influence. Does a faction take damage if their colony ship gets stolen? No, because the people are still alive. They just belong to someone else. Remember, the people of Acheron Row are used to getting traded around. They know they don't belong to themselves. So being like, Everybody load onto the ship. We're going to another planet. Oh, actually, somebody else took that ship, and now they are serfs on an Eridanus, uh, you know, labor world. Eh. One master is good as the next. Okay, all right, so we don't actually need to reduce the populace because that's part of the move. Do we want to allow factions to just straight up I think I don't I don't think that in this point, I don't think I want to introduce a way to attack the population of a planet just on its own can you trade the ship to somebody yeah totally yeah you could build it fill it up and then just give it to someone totally absolutely you can sell and trade full colony ships yeah i don't yeah i wonder if like mass i guess let's you know what let's put it on the board and let's just make it the same as attack infrastructure so you're just murdering people uh and that's scary so, uh, the civilian non-faction aligned populace of a world is reduced through violence. Ugh. Okay, so prerequisites. Uh, let's see here. Um, you have an asset capable of attacking. Basically, it's just like you could, you could attack a faction, but you choose not to. Yeah. Um, and then you take the attack action, it's unopposed. Instead of damaging the faction, you may damage the populace of a planet. 
Uh, you succeed at the attack, at the massacre goal action. Jesus. Uh, so this is a D10 plus the appropriate set of the attacking asset versus a TN of the current TL plus 10. So how do we make the, what is the target number, like, of getting rid of people? Maybe it's just one number if you succeed? No, you don't need a force. Yeah, you definitely don't need a force asset. Yeah. So you make the massacre action. I guess maybe you just attack. Maybe that's it. Maybe the people, if nobody is willing to defend them, the people are vulnerable. Uh, danger. You're contributing to the slow demise of Acheron Row. You are a grade A bad guy. <laughs> yeah, you're gross. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, um... The reward is reduce the uh, reduce the population of the planet by one by one level, and then I don't know, gain some experience. <laughs> I kind of want to make this like temptingly valuable. The point here is the the number of people on the planet don't matter because factions factions protect civilians. If no faction is willing to protect you, you are fucking toast. It doesn't matter if there is 7 billion of you or if there's one of you, you're done. If a faction comes after you and nobody else tries to protect you. Yeah. Now, the the side the side bit here is that Probably people will oppose that action because populace contributes to influence. Right? Like if you reduce Imperial Prime from billions down, then Imperial Prime becomes less valuable for everyone on it. So I think also maybe there's pillage here too. Gain four XP and then gain like uh, I don't know, two D ten fat creds, and then roll on the chaos table. <laughs> There you go. Any attempt uh, triggers a roll on the chaos table. There we go. I want it to be like a fair amount. Maybe 2d8 instead. I want it to be a lot. Yeah. Oh, that's a good call. So how about like uh, 1d10 plus x fat creds where x is equal to the current PCVI population modifier so if you go after if you go after a tl5 planet and you start messing with their people you're gonna get 1d10 plus x fat creds where x is equal to the current modifier yeah so that lets us leverage this bad boy right 